Hey friends, <laughs> how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community. Here we read a chapter of the Bible a day and then discuss it afterwards. Um, if Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps our community grow. Um, one of the things YouTube looks for is likes, subscribes, comments, that sort of thing in order to um, recommend the channel. And the purpose of the community is for us to grow together as a community. And in order for us to do that, we need to be able to open the door to more people. So I'm hoping that you will like and subscribe to this video. It would really mean a lot. I have some great news. If you watched yesterday, then you already know I'm going to be starting a monthly newsletter and there's a link in the description box below if you'd like to go ahead and sign up for that. Um, as part of that form, there's also a question if you would like to be part of the prayer team here on His Princess Christian Ministries. And what that just would entail is you would receive a weekly email which would just um, have different prayer requests from different subscribers and members of the community. And we'll just pray together in agreement. Um, and then there's also a link to the actual prayer request form if you have a prayer that you'd like to submit so that we can all pray together in agreement. Um, or there is also a praise um, report um, form also in the description box below. We want to hear how God has been blessing you. And what I'd like to do is include that information in the newsletter or um, read some on the daily um, readings and discussions. Um, so with all that business out of the way, so don't forget to check the description box. And if you have any questions, make sure you send me an email. The link is also in the description box, or you can um, send me a DM on my Instagram, which is in the description box below as well. Um, so today we're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 17. Um, but before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and say a quick prayer. If you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me, I'd appreciate it. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. We are so glad to be together and to be sharing in this praise and worship. We appreciate your word. Thank you for opening our hearts and our ears so that we may receive you. Thank you for keeping our mind clear during this Bible reading. And thank you for speaking through us as we seek to understand and apply your word. In Jesus name, amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Chapter 17. Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. A wise servant will rule over the master's disgraceful son and will share the inheritance of the master's children. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. Those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at the misfortune of others will be punished. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool, even less are lies fitting for a ruler. A bribe is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. Evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in foolishness. If you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. Starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate, so stop before a dispute breaks out. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to the Lord. It is senseless to pay to educate a fool, since he has no heart for learning. A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. It's poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. 
Anyone who loves to quarrel loves sin. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. The crooked heart will not prosper. The lying tongue tumbles into trouble. It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. The wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. Sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool eyes wander to the ends of the earth. Foolish children bring grief to their father and bitterness to the one who gave them birth. It is wrong to punish the godly for being good or to flog leaders for being honest. A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouths shut, they seem intelligent. Amen. <laughs> so what did you think of today's reading? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Don't forget, comment your favorite verse if you have one. Um, that way we can all hit the like button <laughs> and um, just kind of share what we have in common together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do like I usually do and read through each line um, word by word um, or verse by verse. And when we get into some of the other books, I'll do a little bit more in-depth Bible study where I'll talk about some of the history behind the um, book that we're reading. I'll um, get into more detail about the different translations. Um, but Proverbs is um, pretty straightforward. Um, once we finish the book, I'll probably do a quick recap where I'll discuss the history and um, go over some more important details um, and various translations um, that I think is important um, as we study the book of Proverbs. Um, so verse one says, better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. And I highlighted this because I've lived in situations that were full of discord, conflict, confrontation, and anger. Um, I, it was definitely not the Lord's house. <laughs> and, um, you know, although I was eating good and I was having, a, you know, a good time, um, I wasn't at peace. And, um, you know, there was, it's like those types of things, you know, having all the food in the world, fancy cars, fancy clothes, all that stuff is nice, but if you don't have peace in your heart, then none of it matters. Um, a wise servant will rule over the master's disgraceful son and will share the inheritance of the master's children. And I love this verse. Um, it reminds me a lot about so many of the people in the Bible that God has blessed, that God has brought up from servitude to become masters. And, um, you know, that's from that wisdom that God following that godly path will lead you um, you know only to promotion fire tests the purity of silver and gold but the Lord tests the heart and um, again I love that God knows your heart he knows your intentions he knows your motives and there's no hiding that from him um, wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip liars pay close attention to slander um, so this is something that I'm trying to, again, um, improve upon is the urge to gossip. It's so like um, compelling and, you know, even just watching TV shows that are full of drama, like soap operas and, and that sort of thing. It's so compelling to want to watch that and, and talk about different stories. Um, but this verse right here says evil evil doers are eager to listen or wrongdoers are eager to listen to gossip so i want to be the opposite i don't want to encourage gossip anymore as i talk with people no matter how much i want to know like i want to know what is she up to what has she been doing or did you hear about you know so and so or guess what happened at work today oh my gosh you know like it's so eager to um, gossip and liars pay close attention to slander so again people are spreading slander they're spreading gossip um, and I'm trying to ch turn that around so instead of saying like oh my god what happened at work today I try to regain the focus I'm really trying to figure out how I can handle these types of situations differently or um, when somebody comes to me with gossip 
I try to be very nonchalant and I try to just brush it off. I try not to be rude because I still want to keep that, um, you know, that godly presence. But at the same time, I try to remove myself from those types of situations and or redirect the conversation to something more positive. Um, if you have any suggestions on on that, please comment below. I could always use them um, because in dealing with people, you're going to come across that and the temptation is huge to fall into it. And it's easy to, um, you know, momentarily when you're not paying attention, you know, involve yourself in those types of things. And that's why it's so important, especially when we're dealing with other people to pay attention. Um, those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at the misfortune of others will be punished. And I really like this because um, you see so many people that even if you think somebody deserves something, you should never be happy at their misfortune, even if they are a wrongdoer. Because at the end of the day, you will be punished. And it, I mean, it's right there. It, uh, it, in the Bible, it says you will be punished if you rejoice at the misfortune of others. Um, those who mock the poor insult their maker, that as well. You know, you should never look down on somebody for, you know, they're, when they're involved in a hard time. Um, but don't rejoice when somebody else is going through some something bad, even if you don't particularly like them because again we're made in God's image we're trying to be good ambassadors and that's not something that Jesus would do like what would that whole what would Jesus do movement we need to bring that back like what would Jesus do in this situation um, would he laugh at them would he be happy that something bad happened to them or would he pray for them and help them in any way that he could um, grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged um, Parents are the pride of their children. Parents should be the pride of their children. Um, so if you're a parent, make sure that you are following a godly path and you are setting a good example for your children. And if you haven't in the past, there's no better time than today to turn that around. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool, even less are lies fitting for a ruler. And um, this was interesting. I didn't highlight this or anything, but eloquent words are not fitting for a fool. So um, people who I'm kind of like torn with this one because um, the definition of eloquent words is what I'm really trying to dive deeper into and I want more understanding of because um, I don't necessarily agree with that if you don't use eloquent words what in my mind I'm viewing as eloquent words are that you're a fool um, but however lies are definitely not fitting for a ruler um, so before I make any kind of comment on that one I really want to um, like research it more get more of an understanding of it and pray on it a little bit more um, so I can understand like where it's coming from um, and then verse 8 says a bribe is like a lucky charm Whoever gives one will prosper. And this I put a question mark beside because I'm not sure I really understand this one at all. So if you have any insight, please comment below. Um, I would love to get more insight on this one because in previous um, verses, I've, it said don't bribe. So um, let's see if I can find it. And I particularly remember saying that you don't need bribes because you have God's favor. Um, So I probably should have. So I'll probably just take some time and maybe I will comment, um, put a comment in the comments to kind of like redirect you to where that verse was. And then maybe you can give me some insight as to how you feel about it or um, if you can kind of give me a better understanding of what it meant. 
but at quick glance I'm not finding the verse that I'm looking for um, Okay, I'm not finding the verse that I'm looking for um, just at quick glance, but um, I'm just interested to see like a bribe is like a lucky charm. Obviously, when if you get the bribe, then you're lucky. Um, but if you're bribing someone, it seems, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right that the whole term bribe seems negative. Um, so... I'd like some, you know, information from you if you have some. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to start this community so we could bounce ideas off of each other, insights, um, wisdom. Uh, so num verse 9 says, Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. And I love this. Um, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. Um, so to me forgiveness is key in being forgiven and accepting God's blessings if you want to be blessed if you want to be forgiven you need to forgive and um, at the end of the day dwelling on forgiveness you know I've, I've heard this quote before doesn't make you doesn't make that that person right it makes you free and um, but at the same time the person should repent <laughs> meaning that they should not continue to keep doing the same things and whatever they did wrong to you it should end um, so, or they should work be working to improve the situation as well um, but sometimes that starts with forgiveness like forgiving them opens the door for them to repent um, so verse 10 a single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool and um, I love this and my mom probably well she has called me a fool many many times <laughs> and if you're watching mom don't comment about that <laughs> but um, honestly like you know you could spank me a thousand times when I was a kid and it did not matter um, however um, when you spoke to me with understanding I understood so um, even though this isn't exactly what this verse is saying so we'll just put that on the we'll table that for another day <laughs> but a single rebuke does more for a person of understanding so then a hundred lashes on the back of a fool like when I'm reading that I'm seeing that sometimes um, all it takes is understanding evil people are eager for rebellion but they will be severely punished um it, that's kind of to the point <laughs> if you're evil and you're seeking to rebel against god <laughs> then you will be punished um it's safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in foolishness that's huge but it's kind of scary to think about because a bear who has think about that a bear robbed of her cubs is dangerous violent wicked um only seeing red <laughs> but that's safer than to confront a fool caught in foolishness and so sometimes i wonder if maybe that's why people never corrected me when i was doing wrong was because they just knew i was being a fool um so i still would have appreciated the correction <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying maybe they thought I was a fool but I really wasn't a fool um, I was just doing foolish things so um, I don't know I feel like sometimes you have to pray to God about whether or not this person is a fool or not are they really a fool or are they just doing foolish things have they just been led astray and I think that's in, in the Bible where it keeps saying like don't correct mockers and you know but how do you know who is a mocker and um, you know they say by the fruits um, you know 
what they produce, what they say and do, the actions that they take, the thing, you know, that that's that sort of thing. You know, you really have to sit back and watch somebody to, to tell whether they're a fool or not. Um, but I think sometimes you focus on just that one action or maybe a few instead of the whole being of that person. Um, and, you know, God never gave up on me. He ne He's not giving up on you. So... Um, I don't know who's a fool <laughs> um, if you repay good with evil evil will never leave your house that is deep um, you know it's like people say like karma you do bad and bad things come to you but I think it's like when you try when you give out evil evil is just stuck to you um, you know it says all all through the the Bible that the wicked um, the wicked will be punished for everything that they do and whenever you're doing evil things evil is going to stay in your house you're going to always have turmoil and strife and stress and trouble you'll never be at peace starting starting a quarrel is like opening a floodgate so stop before a dispute breaks out always seek peace in all your interactions Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, both are detestable to the Lord. Um, so don't let the guilty go free and don't condemn the innocent. Um, but to me, it's more like we're not the ones who should be judging. It's up to God. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure how you feel about it. Again, comment below. But um, I don't feel like we should acquit or condemn anybody. Um, and then verse 16 says, it is senseless to pay to educate a fool since he has no heart for learning. And, you know, I mean, they said it. God said it. So I'm not going to refute it. Again, I have this whole thing about, but who is a fool? Who is a fool really in God's eyes? And who are we to say who is a fool and who's not? Um, a friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in times of need. Wish I had a brother. <laughs> um, but to me, a friend can, a brother can be a friend or a fr I mean, a friend can be a brother. Um, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. So keep that in mind. Um, it is poor judgment to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for a friend. And, you know, I've spoke about this when it was um, mentioned earlier in Proverbs um, that it puts you in a sticky situation when you, um, you know, loan somebody money or secure their debt, be their guarantor, um, be a reference. You're putting yourself on the line and you're leading to, if they're not able to pay and you need the money, it's leading, it's going to lead to um, a confrontation. So sometimes it's better just to, um, point them in the right direction of somebody who can help them and maybe even like donating money to that cause that can help them um, showing them a way that they can get to where they're going pray with them that God gives them the guidance that they need to get where they're going because at the end of the day God is going to provide everything that you need and he's going to make a way he's a way maker Anybody who loves to quarrel loves sin. Anyone who trusts in high walls invites disaster. Um, again, quarreling, anyone who loves to quarrel, who's always argu argumentative, does not have um, peace in their heart. <laughs> um, the crooked heart will not prosper. The lying tongue tumbles into trouble. Always lies will always get you into trouble because one after the another after another after another after another and then you end up tripping over your own words It is painful to be the parent of a fool. There is no joy for the father of a rebel ask my parents about that <laughs> I'm sure they will agree. Don't comment mom <laughs> um, Yes, I know I've been foolish in the past I've been a rebel and there's no joy in it not for them or for me um, a cheerful heart is a is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength, and it does. Like when your spirit is broken, it that's where depression comes in, and um, 
that's when you don't want to leave the house. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to go through your daily routine. Um, and it's one of the worst places to be. But a cheerful heart is good medicine. If you, if you are in a rough place and you're surrounded by somebody who is cheerful, it's going to lift your spirits eventually. And um, if that's part of the reason to have a good community of godly people who can... Um, you know, share that joy with you when you're lacking it. The wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. Um, so it's okay to give bribes if you're godly, but not if you're wicked. I don't know. I'm still like this whole bribe thing <laughs> has got me. So I would love to hear more about you. Um, I definitely think the wicked take the wicked take secret bribes to pervert the course of justice. I agree with that and I agree that it's wrong. But then when we go back and it says, um, verse 8 says, a bribe is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. And it's an exclamation point after it. So definitely going to have to do more research on that one. <laughs> um, sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. You'll always be searching. You'll always be searching. But a sensible person knows where wisdom comes from, and that's from God. Um, so they search no further. Foolish children bring grief to their father and bitterness to the one that gave them birth. Again, <laughs> I have experience. How about you? <laughs> um, it is wrong to punish the godly for being good or to flog leaders for being honest. Um, I... I really agree with this one um, because so often I see um, people who are on a godly path or who are seeking righteousness be bullied or um, and bullied even by people who claim to be Christian um, be held down um, for doing the right thing and then people wonder why they always turn back to um, like wicked ways because that that's where they're accepted and um, so anyway as a Christians we should accept people and praise the their godly path praise them when they're being good and doing the right thing um, reward them for doing the right thing um, because the wicked are going to reward them the wicked want them on their side and they're going to do everything they can to keep them on their side it's like bittersweet. They're going to punish them and then lift them back up. Punish them and then lift them back up. Because they'll always keep coming back as long as they have that reward. And sometimes I feel like that's one of the barriers to people finding finding Christ is some of the Christians um, that are, you know, that go to church every Sunday but talk bad about somebody that comes in new. Like, what is she doing in here? Didn't she just cheat on her husband? Or she's just a whore, you know, like, look at her. What's that dress? And why is she wearing that? Like, just all the judgment. And then they never want to come back. Like, so, it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> um, then verse 27 says, a truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even tempered. Um, so, again, I am working on talking too much. It's one of my many, many... Um, faults character defects <laughs> sometimes I just talk too much and I don't know when to shut up and the problem with that is that um it's when you don't think before you speak or don't take the time to think before you speak or don't draw on that wisdom or that knowledge from God then you can spew things that aren't coming from him or from a holy place even fools are thought wise when they keep silent with their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. Um, so I'm taking that one as um, my new life first. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But really, like, I really want to try to be more silent and more reserved in a lot of situations and just sit back and let people show me who they are. Um, so that is Proverbs chapter 17. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, it helps us open our doors to more people to join our community. And I hope that you stay blessed and stay in God's presence and enjoy the rest of your day. I love you.